the walk-off magic return to the O.co Thursday night. After a slow start, the Green and Gold rallied late to tie the game. The bullpen showed off why they might be the best in baseball. And team leader Coco Crisp hit his first ever Major League walk-off home run to beat the Mariners in the 12th. Last night, unfortunate circumstances and some rough weather set the field back, which postponed the game. But today, the A's will be back at it as they continue this weekend set. It's game two. A's Mariners next. It's a beautiful day for baseball at the O.co Coliseum. Lots of sunshine, a nice crowd is gathering, and the A's are going to get their first look at King Felix. He's going to be opposed by Dan Straley. So good pitching matchup, as always, with King Felix on the mound. It's game two of the series. It's the Seattle Mariners, and it's the Oakland A's coming up on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kyber. Beautiful day, so we're looking forward to what should be a very entertaining game. Coco Crisp, right? He's in his fifth year with the A's, and uh, no doubt he he makes it go for the athletics. Yeah. But last couple of years, we've seen the home run, and he's won a game already this year with a home run. Well, the igniter, and I think everybody wants to see him get on base, utilize his speed, which he has done, but he also last year with 22 home runs, he will walk, he will get on base, he'll steal bases, but when he can add power, remember great Ricky Henderson, could do that as a leadoff hitter as well, but this is what he wants to do. He wants to steal bases. He got one the other night, and of course, when he gets on, and this is the, what he really can do. And if he goes to the plate, he's trying to do that. That's what he was telling us, which is amazing because hitters can go to the plate. I want to end it. I want to get a fastball to do it. He happened to do it on Thursday night. Fortunately, after four hours of baseball, no secrets with Felix Hernandez. He's very good. If you're a hitter, you know what you're going to get. It's going to be top quality stuff. And Ray, he has always pitched good against the Athletics, <laughs> especially here at the Coliseum. But it's his normal turn today and his manager said he's the number one he's going to stay in the slot they were not going to move him around give him extra rest he's pitching on his regular turn he has been outstanding and Kaipa, I remember when he first came up the hitters kept saying oh no he's in this division we're going to have to face him a lot 30th time he's starting against the A's that's a lot and he's still only what 27 so he's going to be around a long time all right so we're looking forward to what should be a good game Hernandez and Straley is your pitching matchup again a beautiful day the field looks great and we are set for baseball we'll have lineups and we'll have first pitch when we come back.
Bacon Insider and Jack in the Box. It's got bacon mixed right into the patty at participating restaurants. And by Toyota. Do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. We're set for Saturday afternoon baseball from the O.Co. Coliseum. The gold tops this afternoon for the A's as they take the field. And let's check out the game time weather. It's presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is open this weekend. Beautiful day, 61 degrees. Lots of blue skies, just a few puffy white clouds off in the distance. So this is a, a very nice day for a ball game. So hopefully the the rain is gone and hopefully it's gone for a long time. We shall see about that. Let's look at the Starting lineup for the visiting Seattle Mariners. Abraham Almonte will lead off in center field. He's a switch hitter. Brad Miller is the shortstop, and then it's Cano, Smoke, Smoke as a switch hitter as well. Hart, Seeger, Morrison, Ackley, and the catcher is Mike Zanino. And Dan Straley finally gets his first start of the season. It's be his fourth career against the Mariners. He is yet to defeat the Mariners. He lives up in Oregon, so I'm sure he would like to. Uh, Improve on that, especially being from the Northwest. He last pitched on the 19th in an actual Cactus League game. He did pay, face a minor league team after that, but it's been a while since he's actually been on the mound. But I really don't think it's going to affect him because adrenaline does a lot for a pitcher, especially if this is his first start. Cespedes, Crispin, Reddick in the outfield for the A's. Donaldson, Lowry, Sogard, and Martin on the infield, and Jaso is the catcher. So we are set to go. Game two of the series. The postponement last night. We'll have a day game tomorrow. There's still no word on when tomorrow's game will be replayed. And an announcement maybe coming in the next couple days. We'll find out. First pitch of the game is a bit high. So we are underway. The A's and the Mariners in what is now game two. Of the series. First pitch, 107. That was Straley, is considered the number five starter. Since it's been such a strange week with the rainouts, the rotation has kind of been sliding around a little bit. Well, Straley works quickly and he usually throws strikes and had some great outings already this spring, but this is his first game at this level. Two and two now to El Monte. Miller will be next, and then Cano here in the first inning. A's come in with a two and two record. The Mariners are three and one. And that's a swing and a miss, and this ball game starts with a Dan Straley strikeout. Time now for the Nissan keys to the game. It's not opening week if the A's don't face. Jim Fitz. At least it's not opening night because he has started the last four opening nights for against the Athletics and for Dan Straley. Stepping up in the rotation, exactly. He started game four of the division series against the Tigers last year and almost came out successful, but uh, when Johnny Peralta got him, helped the Tigers win game four and five. And I still say, Ray, and I don't know if everybody agrees with you or not, but. The Peralta home run was the biggest hit of the series. Absolutely. Biggest, well, just his presence in the lineup, in addition to his success that he had, which uh, under the new guidelines, he would not have been able to play last year against the A's in the Division Series. The new uh, rules, I guess you could say. But that's then, and Dan Straley trying to get off the good start this afternoon. And, you know, I think the one thing that we've talked about in this. Opening home stamp already, and how quickly the A starters work. Something the A's pitching coach Kurt Young wants them to do: get the ball, get ready, and go. Swing and a miss. Fastball. Tailing away from Miller and back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the game for Dan Straley. Did a great job of elevating the fastball. You saw the movement, almost kind of a riser, supposed to be inside, left it outside, but the movement is almost like a left-hander throwing a slider, and you can see the look on Straley. After he delivered what he thought was going to be a fastball inside, tailed way off the plate to Miller, but he swung and missed anyway. Exmo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. Here's Cano who takes a fastball right there for a strike. Straley last year led all American League rookies in innings pitched and strikeouts on his way to the 10 and 8 record. That one is driven to left center and that's hit well. Coco Crisp is at the wall and he's got just enough room. Makes a basket catch. Side retired. So Cano hit it well, comes up short, and it's a three up, three down inning for Straley.
Today's lineup as we head to the bottom of the first. It's Coco Crisp leading things off, and then Donaldson, Lowry, Moss, Cespedes, Jaso, Reddick, Barton, and Sogard. So a whole bunch of left-handed hitters in that lineup. We need all the help you can get against the King, King Felix Hernandez. 12 and 10 last year, three plus ERA. Second start this season, defeated the Angels in Anaheim. So the A's not on the schedule to see him today. They'll see him also next week when they go to Anna, uh, Seattle. I think they'll be on tap because they probably have an off day. Uh... <laughs> you don't even have to figure it out. You know he's going to no, pitch against know. the A's. Exactly. And he has a chance six times <laughs> as the two clubs will have three series here, three in Seattle. And every time you look in advance, is he going to pitch? And I think. Uh, he is scheduled to. We shall see. But he's good. And he will use a lot of different types of pitches. And when you pitch a perfect game, it's pretty special, which he did last year. And he can throw so many different things. But really, today is up to Dan Strader. Because if he can shut down the offense of the Mariners and the A's can work Felix Hernandez, a lot of good things can happen. Coco did not wait around. Swing at the first pitch, one and one now. Felix Hernandez. He is 27 years old. He'll be 28 next Tuesday. He's from Venezuela. He's got a Cy Young. That was in 2010. He's been an All Star four times, including last year. And he's born and raised in Valencia, Venezuela, where I was fortunate to spend three winters playing winter baseball in Valencia with Magallanes baseball team. He wasn't even a dream at the time I was there, but uh, he signed at age 16. And yes, when he made his appearance, everybody knew yep. he's going to be around a long time. And in this division, plus he just signed a contract that's going to keep him a Mariner probably for life. Foul back. His contract runs through 2019. He'll be 32 at that time. So yeah, he's going to be an old man. Give him another one. Seven year deal. I think the Cy Young Award says a lot when he won just 13 games, but a 227 earned run average. And off speed, and Coco swings over top, and that's out number one. Here's the defense for the Mariners. Ackley, Almonte, and Play Morrison third. in the outfield. Seager, Miller on the left side. Cano, Smoke on the right side. Zanino, the good-looking young catcher, will handle Felix Hernandez today. Uh, John Buck was scheduled to catch Chris Young last night and Chris Grizz, and they said that Zanino and Felix worked well together, so we'll probably see this battery for quite a while. Outside corner call the strike to Donaldson. A little bit of a slow start for Josh. Two for 18. Bounce to short. Nice hop for Miller, and that's out number two. Getting back to Felix Hernandez, Ray, his opening night start was against the Angels, and Running they third. won that game. Shortstop. He gave number up eight. a two run yeah. homer to Mike Trout in the very Lowry. first inning, and all that did was just ticked him off. And I think <laughs> Trout even said it is, I think we made him mad yeah. because then he really got tough, and he ended up you know, in six innings. Gave up one more run after the Trout home run, but he had 11 strikeouts, and the Mariners won that game 10 to three. And we've seen that before, where he's a little, a little shaky early, and then it almost does look like he gets a little mad and throws a little bit harder, maybe concentrates a little bit more. I don't know. A couple of years ago in Seattle, he's had the bases loaded, nobody out first inning. He got out of it without allowing a run. And at that point, it was all Felix because. We say it often if pitcher struggles early you better get him early because he will settle down and Felix if he pitched a perfect game against the Tampa Bay Rays he settled down from pitch number one to be able to pitch them. What is it about the Rays and perfect games? No hitters. They just seem to be there but a lot of success for Joe Madden and his crew in St. Petersburg. Go to the Lowry goes down to get it fouls it back. So on two to Lowry. Lowry three for 14 to start the year with a couple of RBIs. He's got a double. And that's nasty stuff right there. And a couple of strikeouts for Felix Hernandez. So both pitchers 
Sharp in the first inning. No score after one. And decide today's player of the game. Your vote counts. Winner will be revealed during A's post game live. Follow the action on the diamond like never before with enhanced Bloomberg stats and more. A's in game live on CSNCalifornia.com. Log on now and vote. Justin Smoke to lead it off. First pitch high from Straley. Straley, like Hernandez, a couple of strikeouts as part of the three up, two down first inning. Change up just a bit outside. Dan Straley last year, 152 innings pitched at the big league level. But he also threw 31 innings at the triple A level. So, Ray, if my math is correct, that's 183 innings. And that's a nice total for him. And there's no reason to think if he stays healthy. He could get to 200 innings yeah. this year. Yeah, easily. And the key is the health, and uh, that's an important thing for any pitcher. But I think also last year, remember right before the All Star game, he made a start, and that's when they brought up Sonny Gray because Dan was not going to pitch until after the break, so they gave a chance to Sonny Gray to get his feet wet, which helped him with a couple of appearances out of the bullpen. Australia happened to be kind of the odd man out, and as a result, spend some time in Triple A. But you're right; it's a total number of innings, mm -hmm. and you hope to improve on that 10, 15 percent the next year, and that would have him at the 200 inning mark. Yeah, pitch to Smoke is fouled off Jason, and the count remains three and two. So Jared Parker in the dugout with the. No, I, I don't want to say arm sling because that's not a sling. That's. A little bit more than that. Uh, pitches up and the ball down and got him a couple of different places off the left knee. And then down on the right thigh, which is unprotected. At least the knee was protected. Hit hard into the shift. Sogard out on the grass. Flips to first. And that's out number one. So smoke. Hits it to Sogard. And that'll bring up Corey Hart. Batting fifth. Now, people will say in the case of the shift we've seen it with Brandon Moss we've also seen him bunt smoke of course for three to the right side and people say well they'll give up a bunt and a single instead of a home run well that single with a bunt giving it to him can open up a beginning as well so it could work a couple of different ways depending on how many outs there are in an inning in case of uh, leading off an inning you might be able to start a big big one with the bunt. So on one to Corey Hart. Corey Hart on Thursday night was 0 for 5. That was the 3 2 A's win in 12 innings. Came the 
last over four hours in a 3 2 game. And a lot of three ball counts from Alias, the starting pitcher for the Mariners. There was a whole heck of a lot going on for a 3 2 game. Some good, some bad, <laughs> some ugly. <laughs> but the finish and the final hit by Coco was perfect. Yeah, that one right past Corey Hunt. 90 mile an hour fastball, but if you get somebody to swing through it, it had to have a little late movement. Well, and that's the thing that Straley has come to the big leagues, and people Nine talk seconds. about the number of strikeouts at the minor league level before he got here. I don't understand why, Seager. but you're exactly right. When it approaches the plate, you think it's easy to hit, and then it just keeps moving. And that ball moved from the outside to the middle part of the plate. And we saw with the Miller strikeout, same thing. That's the fastball slider. Pretty much those two pitches will dominate a game for him. So lots of sliders, and Bob Melvin used the term wipeout slider. I was talking to him during spring training, meaning it's a major strikeout pitch for Straley. There's probably one thing he'd like to eliminate this season is that whenever he walks a batter, it's usually in four pitches. He just completely loses, and then has to pitch out of the stretch right now behind the Sager 2 and 0. 2 and 1 now uh, to Seager hitting in the sixth spot. Seager 1 for 11 with an RBI so far this year. There's that slider, which is tough on left-handed hitters, just like right-handed hitters. Well, you like to have a put-away pitch, and that's what his slider is. You can see kind of rapid whenever he threw it, got a little bit extra torque on it, and a good one. A lot of options for John Jason who wants a high fastball. The foul. So the the crowd today and it's a nice crowd and showing some life early on there into the fact that Straley has a two strike count leftover energy from last night it's possible roll foul Five straight retired by Straley to open the ball game. Outside and it's well off the plate. Full count to Seeger. Well, he can throw the slider. He can throw the two seam fastball. He has several options and that makes it nice for a catch. Jaso comes back. Fighting the sun, but it's going to drop just out of play. The diamond level seats. You get a foul ball in the diamond level seats. Maybe the most important thing there is to set your food down yeah. before you make the play. And if you don't make the play, then it goes to the folks right above you. Straley kicks payoff pitch. Foul ball again. This one just to our left. Good battle. Nine pitch at bat between Straley and Seeger. And a changeup, and he got him swinging. So Straley has four strikeouts through the first two innings. He looks like he's sharp today. He's going to have to be with Felix Hernandez head back to the mound.
a strange night last night. And everybody thought there was going to be a ball game. There was not. And the field just not playable. The infield, and I think that shot right there says it all. Yeah. You cannot play a baseball game when the infield is soft like that, and the game was called off. Again, the makeup date has not been announced just yet. I would have managed it will be at some point soon. So a, a, a disappointing night, and I know a lot of people were disappointed. And I think Ray he's handled it well. They said, listen, we made a mistake. We got a bad weather report. We went with it. Should have put the tarp on. We didn't. We made a mistake. And you know, now it's time to, to move on. And we have to understand that in Oakland and in California, it really doesn't rain as much as back in the Midwest and the East where they have a, an abundance of ground crew members. And just the idea of putting the tarp on, it's not as easy as people might think. It's very heavy, roll it out the whole thing. But you get a weather report, you think it's going to be good. It doesn't turn out that way. And, but uh, you're right. They had a well. Beautiful day today. And ironically, on uh, Thursday night before that game, Clay Wooderman's crew were watering down the infield dirt. And we know what happened last night. And today they were doing the same thing, which they typically water it down because the sun bakes it throughout the day, especially a day game. And it looks like it's it's very dry right now. Here's Cespedes who takes low. So three strikeouts in four hitters for Felix Hernandez. The Mariners come back to Oakland March 5, or not March, May 5, 6, and 7. That's a Monday, Tuesday, and a Wednesday. So the makeup game could be done there. Let's see. They also come back. It looks like September 1, 2, and 3. That's also Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So one of those two series will turn into a four game series. Backhanded. Seeger, nice play, straightens up. He's got to hurry, and they get Suspicious. So two out. Well, anybody playing behind Felix knows that basically he is a great pitcher and try to make every play. And see, he does a good job backing the ball on the line. And you're right, he has to hurry because Cespedes can fly down the line. Any hesitation and without a strong throw, Cespedes is going to be safe. And Seeger made it nicely. So Jaso will hit. Jaso takes a strike. Well, last year in the opener. King Felix retired the first 10 batters he faced, and Jaso hitting higher in the batting order, 10th batter, or 11th batter, got the first hit for the Athletics. Well, Jaso spent the 2012 season in Seattle. Played in 108 games at 276 with 10 homers and 50 RBI. So he certainly caught Felix Hernandez a fair amount. Know that that makes any difference. It looks like Fernandez is sharp as well. He's got four strikeouts. Maybe a pitcher's duel this afternoon.
for a variety of ticket plans to fit your schedule, as well as one of the most flexible ticket exchange policies in all of Major League Baseball. In addition, A's ticket plans provide significant savings off dynamically priced single game tickets. For more information, call 510-638-GOYS or visit athletics.com slash ticket plans. Top of the third, and Logan Morrison to lead it off. Morrison at the Enzanino. Strilly has gone six up, six down with four strikeouts, as has Felix Hernandez. That one rolled just foul. And Morrison shooting for a double, but it was foul. It's an interesting call by Manny Gonzalez, the umpire at first base. He gave a kind of a safe sign. You know, hands. Goes out of the ground a couple of times. Usually they just point in foul territory. Yeah. Or lift up your hands, yeah. meaning. That's right, yeah. Ball is dead, dead. Or, yeah. or foul ball. Play is dead. There's the rest of the crew. The field and culprit. The balls and strikes. So 0-2 to Morrison. Happy youngster, can't beat it. Morrison is one for six with four strikeouts to start the season. And he rips that one to right field for a hit. It's a hanger. Stayed right in the middle of the plate, no break to it at all. And as a result, hitters hit mistakes, Morgan. Look at Morrison just hit one. Look where this location is. Stays Back off. And, boy, that's right in the heart of the plate. Fortunately, hit on top of the ball to keep it in the park. Just a single. So that's the first base runner in this game. And here's Dustin Ackley. Not exactly where Straight and wanted to pitch. Donaldson comes in on the grass. Ackley takes high. Outfield shaded toward left center. You know, you'd have to think, and that's a, that's a great point. Talk about Donaldson, even with the grass are up on the grass, because when Hernandez pitches and it's figured to be a low-scoring game, you want to try to get on the board as quickly as possible, which means you might be sacrificing earlier in the game. Than that. Especially if you've watched him pitch for two innings and he's got four <laughs> strikeouts and he looks like he's got it all working and he's not throwing a lot of pitches yeah. which you hope to get him out of the game early but if he's throwing strikes which he has been all day already be in for a while Really with a check, Morrison decent lead at first. Missed again, 2 0. So sometimes, see a pitcher struggle some when they go into the stretch for the first time in the ball game. It's not uncommon. Zanino waiting in the on deck circle, the right handed hitter. Ackley popped it up. Donaldson fighting the sun. Now Lowry comes in and Lowry grabs it. It's amazing what change of speeds will do for a pitcher, how it will help them, and what it does to a hitter when you're looking at pitch. Nine. And two and all, you're thinking Number something three, hard, and Mike watch the swing by Ackley. Gets out on the front foot and just that's an easy pop up. Makes me think of Hector Noesi, who was designated for Simon after the walk off on Thursday. Pitched a game against the A's. He had about 13 of those weak pop ups because mm -hmm. he kept changing speeds. And you do that as a pitcher, and you're effective. You're going to get a lot of the hitters off balance out on the front foot, just weak pop ups. So he knows swings and misses. Zanino is four for 14 with a homer and four RBI so far this year. He also has a double and a triple. Communication between middle infielders. I 
got it. You got it. Looks like Bowers making the call and Sogard confirms it. That's always good to see, and that's after getting the sign from the catcher. And fielder will say who's going to be covering. And that signal is not some super special secret by the A's. It's the universal right. middle infielder signal to each other. Oh, two pitch and a swing and a miss. Strikeout number five for Straley. Just a sneaky fastball and right on top and now, just Number ever so slight movement on that fastball. And again, he can start at the outside corner as if it's a waste pitch, and here it comes, and the hitter has to swing. And just a little hesitancy in a swing will enable a pitcher to get a strikeout. Again, he's out on the front foot, a little full of the velocity of the pitch. They'll talk about it, though. Abraham Amante takes a strike from struck out swing. All five strikeouts for Straley. Swinging strikeouts. Now it's on two. That's amazing. We're seeing 88, 89, 90 miles an hour, and guys are swinging right through it. A little bit high. Almonte thought about it. High again, two and two. That's Brad Miller. Hoping to get a chance to hit here in the top of the third. Well, these type of games also we talked about sacrificing also maybe hit and run steal try to do something to generate a run. Really trying to take care of himself as he does, has done already five times. Straley's ready and the 2 2 pitch swing and a miss. 89 mile an hour fastball and that is six strikeouts through three innings for Dan Straley. Bottom of the third coming up.
only but 18 strikes, just yeah. two balls for Hernandez. He's thrown a total of 20 pitches. He's faced five, he's faced six hitters. He's thrown five first pitch strikes. So. So you're saying he's pretty good. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Australia's been sensational. Good. So it's early, yeah. but this one has the makings of an old-fashioned pitcher's do. Yeah, I think the one thing for Felix Hernandez is he is maybe proven today. He was scheduled to pitch today, and he is pitching today. Chris Young, who was scheduled to pitch last night, they didn't have him pitch this afternoon, as the case with Dan Australia. I think pitchers get a routine. They, they make plans on when they're making their next start and they have a routine in between starts. Lord McClendon, first year manager, he knows his ace is on the mound. Iwakuma is out, so his number two guy is not able to pitch. High fly ball down the left field line and foul. Reddick, Bart, and Sogard here in the bottom of the third. It's nice to see short sleeves and sunshine. Fastball right there, strike three call. Five strikeouts for Felix Hernandez. Let's look back at the career of Felix Hernandez. Boy, it started as a youngster, 19 years old when he made his major league debut. Back in 2005, and he's terrific. No getting around it. When Cy Young, 2010, perfect game in 2012. Well, no surprise there with the 200 innings. And he was very emotional when he signed his extension last season, and lives in Seattle, stays there in the off season, and. He is the king, has his own king in his courts down the left field line, which we'll see next weekend. He's go to Seattle. Grounded right to Miller. Barton is retired. So, again, I mentioned Hernandez will be 28 next week. So, most strikeouts before his 28th birthday. He's going to add to that total today. Ray Foster knows that guy. Sudden Sam McDonald. Right, Walter Johnson pretty good company, especially with the big train there, Walter Johnson. And Burt be home by 11, and we'll see him next week in Minneapolis. Can't yeah, wait to see Burt, the Hall of Famer. Can't believe Eric Sogard's Nerd Friday night was postponed. Still bummed about <laughs> that. Some people were bummed. At as they were coming in and realized the game was canceled, they didn't get their nerd shirt and glasses. We didn't get the t shirt. Yeah, no. the t shirt. They're looking for that. Line to left. Ackley has to hustle back and he reaches up, makes the catch. Side retired. Nine up, nine down for Felix Hernandez. Fourth inning coming up.
the A's are selling authentic game use and autograph memorabilia behind Section 120 at the Coliseum. Uh, items include autographed baseballs and jerseys, game use helmets, bats, balls, and bases, lineup cards, and more. All items are authenticated under the MLB authentication program. A portion of the proceeds will benefit the Oakland A's community fund. Top of the fourth inning, it's Miller, Cano, and Smoke for Seattle. That's their two, three, and four hitters. Aaron Farrell, who uh, puts all those items together and probably slip in the Mariners. King Felix, baseball with perfect game on it. Probably would be very fit, beneficial to our community fund, so I'm sure Eric's on that. And you're not saying that because he. Retired nine straight. No, no, no. That's from last year's perfect <laughs> game. No, it has nothing to do about today. No, absolutely not. No, no, no. No, that was against Tampa Bay, the 23rd perfect game. So a Cy Young Award perfect game. And another strikeout for Dan Sterling. Sterling, not to be outdone, has seven strikeouts in three and a third inning. Another elevated fastball, another fastball with movement on it. Starts in. Under, up is the pitch and movement to get out. This left hand hit. No one out. Here's Cano. Change up, drops in there for a strike, 81 miles an hour. Ball to center field for Cano in the first inning. Fifty five pitches thrown by Straley. And that one's hit into center field, and that's a base hit. So Cano drops one into center, and that's two hits now for the Mariners off Straley. Uh, Cano will now use batting. the whole field. A ball hit team. hard to left Justin center, Smoke. caught by Coco Chris. This one, though, straight away center field. And Safeco Field might be well suited for Robinson Cano. Granted, at Yankee Stadium with a shorter right field fence, would hit more home runs. Maybe not as many at Safeco, but the way he uses the whole field, sprays the ball around, batting average could be very high. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to hit 300 wherever he plays. Yeah. And if you get a ballpark where balls drop in a little bit more, yeah. I mean, he's the kind of guy that he could win a batting title. That's true. No one pitched to smoke a bit high, one and one kind. Of. Ray, we want to wish a speedy recovery to a huge A's fan. His name is Rudy Guzman. We know Rudy wishes he was here, but we want him to get well soon and then get back to the Coliseum and where he can watch his A's in person. If he's watching at home, can wish a speedy recovery to Rudy Guzman. We've been told he's a huge A's fan. So we need him out here. And he would enjoy a day like today. I'm sure he this is good. And this is the kind of day you expect to have throughout the season. Just unfortunate this week, first week is a little bit different, but uh, this is typical Oakland Coliseum A's baseball win. That was belted to center. Coco's back. He's got it, and that's out number two. A well hit ball by Smoke. Coco had plenty of room in deep right center, right in front of the wall. You know when a hitter have to, has to provide his own power and with the movement on the fastball, that ball maybe left like it was going to do something, but you can also see the swing and where the ball ended up on the back of Smoke because it went towards the end, he was not able to pull the ball. So the movement on the fastball is thrown by Dan Straley. It really has created a little bit of a difference in maybe ways hitters will approach and where the ball meets the bat. Sweet part of the bat is where they want to, they don't necessarily always get there. Donaldson, he'll go the short way. Corey Hart is retired and so are the Mariners in the top of the fourth inning. They had a hit, nothing else. Bottom of the fourth coming up.
by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Most walk-off wins since the start of 2012. Well, you know the A's are at the top or near the top of this list. They're second. The Reds have 24. A's and Phillies with 23. Then the Rays and the Dodgers. That's walk-off wins since the start of the 2012 season. And that's our Coors Cold Hard Facts. So we give you that note with Coco Crisp stepping into the box. So here's a note going the other way, Ray. Last year, the Mariners suffered 13 walk off losses. Remember, the A's had, how many did they have in 2012? 13 or 14 walk off wins? How about 13 walk off losses in one year? Ooh. And the great Dennis Eckersley would say, "You're walking off after giving it up. <laughs> That's the walk-off part of it. The, the pitcher walking off dejectedly after giving up a home run or some sort of a hit, walk, whatever. Swing and a miss. 87 miles an hour with a lot of downward movement, and it's one and two. And if Coco Crisp is leading off the fourth inning, it's Eck right there. It's good be, to see him in the house today." <laughs> He was great during the division series last year when he got a chance to see himself as he was broadcasting the network. Coco grounds out this time. This is what he did to end the game on Thursday. Hector Noesi, high fastball. Coco said if the first one had been like the second one, he would have hit the first one out, but it wasn't the same velocity. Noesi tried to go a little bit harder. And Coco got it and he knew what was coming. So one away here in the bottom of the fourth for Donaldson. Donaldson grounded a short in the first inning. It's impressive hitting home runs at the right time. See also how many stolen bases that he's had throughout his career that have ended up scoring runs that have put the club ahead. So he's he can do exactly what the great Ricky Henderson did for many years. Walk it's like a, a double. Well now after hitting 22 home runs last year that's in the back of the pitcher's right. mind as well. You know Josh Donaldson the green light. 3 and 0 oh. may not see another 3 0 oh count all day from this guy. Might not see a 3 ball count. In the outside corner, so Hernandez paints a 3 0 oh pitch. That's not fair. Well, it's not. Lowry, the on deck hitter. Fastball at 91 miles an hour. Well, that might have been ball four, but too close to take and looked like a pretty good pitch to hit. Donaldson with the leg kick and it's all about timing. He started slowly in spring training, got the timing down, mechanism down with the leg kick. Now you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> I mean, that's the problem. <laughs> Therein lies the yeah. problem. I mean, you could throw a 90 mile hour changeup and Throw a hard sinker and slider and, and control with all of them. Three two pitch. Got him swinging. Pitch in the dirt. And there's that. No Ray, is it a splitter? Is it a change slider. of a slider? Like a slider, hard slider. It, it goes down like yeah. a splitter, but for him to throw this three and two. Could have been a change up, but it kind of went down now that you mentioned it, like the hard change up. But uh, it's hard to change up. Thrown like a splitter, has the same downward movement, but that's the aggressiveness as a hitter. It's hard to be patient three and two, and ends up swinging a pitch out of the strength. But Felix didn't give in. That's not surprising. And you know how it is, Ray. If you go up there thinking about taking some pitches, well, then you know it's going to be right down the middle and it's going to be fast. Lowry. 
Lowry struck out swinging to end the first inning. Six strikeouts now for Felix Hernandez. And grounded up the middle. Cano can't get it, and that's the first hit of the game. It's a two out single for Lowry. Now Cano has pretty good range, and boy, he makes that play as well as any second baseman, but he just could not get the glove down. And the reason he did not leave his feet, good sinker away and passed Felix, but watch Cano up the middle. If he leaves his feet, he knows he's not throwing out. Now, if he catches the ball, you're right, he makes it as well as anybody, but could not catch the ball. He could have kept running and thrown from underneath and gotten a lot on the ball. But as Delaire just reminded the great Hawk Carroll's cancel the press conference. So no perfecto today. Let's see. Call Mark Burleys. Said I tell you I saw Hawk in spring training this year. Did you? It was great. Oh, so yeah. I'm walking into Don and Charlie's, the famous steak place in Scottsdale. And I had my family and I'm walking in and I look to my right and there's Hawk. He said, hey big guy. Well, of course you did. It <laughs> made my night. <laughs> hey, I stopped guy. and he was sitting there and Hawk, I said, Glenn Kuiper from the A's, he said, hey, big guy, how you doing? <laughs> that was it. I, see, I what, was a happy what, man. But what you should have said was, hey, Hawk, how you doing? He says, hey, big guy, he says, what's my name? <laughs> Couldn't do that to him. Goodbye, no. Couldn't I do that to but, him. but see, when you say big guy, as Hawk does, as I've always said, he, hey, man, he knows who I am. That's right. But Hawk is the best. And I said, I said, hey, this is a great restaurant. And he said, you know, it's my first time here. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. He said, he's been hearing about it for all these years. Just a bit low. <laughs> Called the strike, unfortunately. The field of Colbert may have missed that one. And now it's one and two. Shift is on for Moss. Well, as an umpire, you would have to think when Felix takes the mound, you're accustomed to seeing a lot of strikes with a lot of different pitches, swing and misses as Donaldson did three and two, or Felix Hernandez throwing quality strikes. And reputation a lot of time helps a pitcher when it comes to umpiring behind the plate because you think he's going to be around the plate. Tough son, man. One is going to drop. Lowry will stop at third. But you could tell right off the bat that the shortstop, Brad Miller, just did not look like he was seeing it very well. And that's kind of the Bermuda Triangle out there, and it dropped. But it's too bad that it was as shallow as it was because with two outs, Jed Lowry was running. And you just have to figure that if it drops, there's got to be a chance to score a run. And, and any way you can, I don't see it. It's probably what he's saying. He probably didn't see it until the last minute when he actually came charging in from left field. And I'm sure the Mariners fans and folks watching the game and listening were happy at least Jed Lowry got a, a legitimate base hit because that would have been one heck of a way to end a perfecto. But now a big hit would be even better. So and see if Cespedes can deliver. He falls behind 0-1 on the count. Cespedes grounded to Seager. Well, on the infield play very deep, which means that Cespedes with his speed, if he hit a ball on the ground, he could maybe beat out some sort of an infield ground ball. A one pitch swing and a miss and a hard slider. So 0-2. You're susceptible to certain pitches as Cespedes has just proved on this slider. They lead him up. We just keep throwing it. And this is when good pitchers bear down when they have runners in scoring position. So Cespedes has a challenge with man that can throw a different assortment of pitches. 0 2 pitch. And he swung and missed. Tag put on by Zanino and the A's rally comes up short. Couple of runners stranded and a fifth inning is coming up. No score.
Sharks hockey all season long. Tonight, tune in on Comcast Sports in California at 7 p.m. The Sharks host the Nashville Predators. Every game is key as the Sharks battle for playoff position. Complete Sharks coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSNCalifornia.com with Kevin Curry. The home of Sharks hockey is Comcast Sports. Good ball game. Great pitcher's duel between Straley and Hernandez. And that one's lifted to left by Seeger. Cespedes has to hustle back. He turns around and it one hops the wall. So Seeger on the first pitch doubles over Cespedes' head in left field. So maybe if you've struck out seven times in the first four innings, you're thinking, I don't want to get to two Number strikes. Well, yeah, that had movement. Morris. And Seeger, who. Can't hit well to the outfield as he just proved, especially over the left fielder's head. And Cespedes, uh, just basically no chance. He kind of turned one way, and maybe he didn't pick up the ball initially off the bat. So here's Logan Morrison, and he tries to check his swing, and he does check his swing. Says Sean Barber. Donaldson, the third baseman, is well in. A couple steps onto the grass. That's a swing. Yep. Barton, the first baseman, is playing back. And this one is popped up on the infield. Got sun here, folks. Barton coming down, and Barton has it in foul territory. Well, that's simply. A hitter trying to do his job by pulling the ball to the right side, but Morrison went out of the strike zone, could not get on top of a pitch that was outside. And while his intentions were good, slams the bat on the ground because it didn't get the job done. Great pitching by Dan Straley. And ideally, you want to pitch a left hander away, try to get him to pull the ball. In this case, he got unridden. That's the fundamental part of baseball. You can see why Morrison was upset with himself for not getting the ball or hitting the ball to the right side. When you think about a game like this where you know who's on the mound and it's got all the makings of a, a very very tight game plays like that or in this case Morrison not doing his job that can come out huge. Well, it changes everything the A's infield probably would have come in because Bob Melvin I'm sure is thinking one run for Phoenix Hernandez is like 10 for somebody else. So this this is the part of the game of baseball which is so great because you have two pitchers pitching exceptionally well and runs are at a premium. It's just a matter of how you might try to manufacture a run. And he's tried to take advantage of the sun field, but it didn't work last day. Two pitch and to the backstop. And Jason will pick it up near the backstop. And well that right there changes everything. Everything. Because that's a two strike pitch. And now the infield will come in, but Straley just buried it. Straley, Jason tried to backhand. He felt he could not get his body in front of the ball. So the infield definitely has to come in. So the count one and two to Acker with Zanino waiting in the on next one. Popped out to the shortstop Lowry in the third inning. That one's hit to right, and that's it. Well, Reddick back, looking up, gone, Eckley to run home. of the pitches and again maybe the, the simple fact that the infield was in trying to get a strike out of ground ball and actually got everything into it fastball there's the movement but the location about belt high and actually his first of the season would have left his bat it's just a matter of how far it was going to go this one's hit to left Cespedes going back 
fighting the sun. And now Coco comes over, and Coco right in front of him grabs it. Zanino's retired. And I think that tells you right there about the ball that Seeger hit over the head of Cespedes. I don't think he saw it initially. For him to react the way he did on that fly ball, granted this one a little bit higher than the one Seeger hit, and maybe. It was just hit too hard Seegers, but Cespedes has no clue where that ball was. Good idea by Coco with a better angle coming over from center field to take charge. And unlike Thursday night where Almonte ran in front of Logan Morrison, this was needed. This was needed. That was not <laughs> needed. And Ackley's first home run of the year. That one's belted to right. And that is gone. Abraham Almonte homers. His first of the year, and now it's three to nothing. A big way. That was a long way. 87 Brad mile Miller. per hour location, maybe a little bit off. And while uh, Josh Reddick went back to the warning track, maybe just admire how far it was hit. Just below the sign that says down to business. The green sign in right field, but that was a poke. Well, the Mariners now have hit eight home runs in this, their fifth game of the season. So. That has been a big part of their early season success, the long ball. See how far Jason had to move inside to try to catch what he hoped would be a swing and miss. Remember, Almonte had struck out twice. And there's a line drive to right center field, and that's a base hit. Miller is going to try for two. Coco comes up throwing, and the throws late, and Miller has a hustling double. Now Monte, a strikeout victim, first to advance, and this fastball did not have the movement and did not fool him. Maybe the late movement Number wasn't 22. there. The movement was the depth, the distance of the home run. It was a long run. So two doubles and two home runs for the Mariners here in the fifth inning. They're going to walk Robinson Cano. Yeah, I don't know if this is so much disrespect to uh, Cano and or, or to the on deck hitter smoke, but because Cano can use the whole field, you have a runner in scoring position where a base hit would score him. That's the danger that Cano brings uh, when you're trying to face him as far as you got to give up a single and a lot of underscore. He's not maybe going to hit as many home runs, but he'll drive him runs. Pomeran starting to throw. That's the third intentional walk for Cano this year. And Kurt Young will trot out. So for four innings, Dan Straley was dominant. He had seven strikeouts and allowed just two hits, but for whatever reason, it's just not happening here in the fifth inning. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with the talking of hitters in the dugout the faced on this third time through the batting order. Second for the bottom part, starting with Seeger and Ackley, but it's a lot of talking. They see what pitches are doing and now batting. Maybe the late Number movement. And Justin Smoke. probably could see the elevation of some of the fastballs, which is a danger zone for a pitcher and good for hitters. First pitch to smoke floats outside. Shift is on Lowry playing right behind second base, trying to keep Miller close. So it's really not a full shift, it's it's more that they're playing smoke to pull. A 20 pitch inning for Dan Straley. This one's popped up. Sogard is under it. He's got it side retired. The damage done. A couple of home runs for the Mariners. And it's 3 0 in Seattle as we head to the bottom of the fifth.
is three to nothing thanks to a couple of home runs. Hernandez has allowed just two hits in four innings. He struck out seven. Remember his first start this year, he had 11 strikeouts in six innings. It's pretty good with the shutdown innings is Felix Hernandez. And at this point, Ray, just get on the board That's right. against him and then go from there. Yeah, and the consolation through 21 pitches by my count the last inning. He had 28 in the first three, so he did throw a few more pitches, but that's the job done. Jaso towards center field, El Monte, and you can well, you can see the sunshine glaring off his glasses, but at least the glasses are in the right spot. This was August 15, 2012, and this is the perfect game. Now, the story here, Ray, is check out who his catcher was. That's John Jaso in the midst of that scrum right there. There's Jaso. So, terrific moment in the career of John Jaso. I think John's run a nice watch as a result of that uh, catch in that perfect game. 23rd perfect game in Major League Baseball history. It was a 1 0 win, so this was not a blowout. 113 pitches, which is really pretty low. Cano, smooth as ever, and Reddick is retired. And you think back to the last uh, four or five perfect games, you look at the pitchers who have pitched them. And Felix Hernandez is not in the category of a have a perfect game and end up in the minor leagues or whatever. And Philip Umber, who pitched a perfect game against the Mariners with the White Sox at the beginning of that season, and look where he's ended up is with the A's and the organization. And Dallas Braden's out of the game because of injuries. Doc Halliday retired. I guess Mark Burley still pitching effectively, and of course Felix Hernandez. Matt Kane has struggled, I guess, to, since his perfect game, although. He's a quality pitcher. There was three that year in 2012. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Not no hitters, perfect games. Down and in to Derek Barton, who grounded a short in the third inning. Close. The Mariners, they won the season series last year from the A's. They played the A's very well. They won 11 of the 19 games played. Of course, in the standings, that's really the most important. That one's hit well to left center field. Now, Monte's on the move, and now Monte right in front of the banner that says, hey, the A's have won the last two AL West championships. But Almonte does not seem bothered by that. He makes a nice catch to end the bottom of the fifth. Sixth inning coming up. It's 3 0 Seattle.
And Australia will face Hart, Seeger, and Morrison. Three run fifth. The difference in the game. Ackley a two run homer, El Monte a solo shot, all in that inning. Mariners feeling pretty good after sweeping the Angels down in Anaheim to start the season. Ray, I looked at their schedule. And there's reasons why they're thrilled to get off to a, a decent start, and it's very early yet. I'll tell you why in a minute. That's after I tell you that fans follow every A's with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile device or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, score stats, audio, free MLB.tv, game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit athletics.com today. Sure say. So one out for Seeger. The Mariners played 23 of their first 34 games on the road. 23. Of their first 34. And their first 16 are against AL West opponents. So if you're going to get off to a good start, it would be a good time to do it if you're the Mariners within your division and a lot of road games. And missing your number two starter. Exactly. So that, that's a tough stretch when you have that many road games early. Pop up five. And of course, we all know where Seattle's located. And each and every year they travel mileage wise more than any other team. The Larry just had 51,000 this year. And I bet a, a, a team that geographically in a better spot, maybe a Chicago team as far oh, as yeah. traveling, it's Donaldson fighting it. And Donaldson hangs in there, and that's a tough play. Well, he had enough time to maneuver to get the best angle to be able to find the ball in a very tough sun. And you watch him, he's not circling around. He's trying to find the ball, and by turning his back a little bit and then backtracking, he was able to find it in the coach's box. But that is a very good play. A little sigh of relief. So two outs for Logan Morrison. Swing and a miss. Yeah, typically the Western Division teams schedules mirror each other, Mariners and Aids. But you think about the A's are traveling a lot because playing the National League East. Yeah. So this is a year where they're going to travel. That's even right. More. Even more. I mean, they already take coast to coast trips, which is the farthest, going down to St. Pete. So yeah, it's tough. Another tough sun ball. Donaldson has this one. So. Pretty good effort by Josh Donaldson and a nice inning by Straley. Bottom of the six coming up. by authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group LLC.
Three nothing Mariners. Here's Bottom of the sixth inning. Second baseman. A couple of hits for the A's. Uh, they were back to back. Lowry with a single. It was in the fourth inning with two outs. And then Moss with the blue double. And the A's had second and third, two outs. But Cespit is struck out. And that is obviously the only scoring opportunity so far for the Athletics. Sogard to lead it off. And he takes a strike. He'll be followed by Crisp and Donaldson. Sogard lined out to left in the first at bat. So we're talking about the trap. So the Mariners travel 51,000 miles last year. That was the most in the American League. The A's 48,000, a close second. How about a Midwest team? No yeah, surprise. The team that traveled the least mileage wise was the Chicago Cubs 23,000 miles. <laughs> so there you go. So that I mean, and that includes the Australian teams. That's this year. I'm sorry. It's not last year. It's looking at the schedule. See where teams are going. Amante gets back. He's fighting the sun. And he's got it. So that's out number one. Maybe that's why the Cubs haven't won in over 100 years that they travel nice. so infrequently or mileage wise that they have so much rest, not enough team bonding. <laughs> but you know, Ray, I mean, you've traveled for many, many years. You've always traveled from here. Right. I mean, I've traveled with the team for 11 years, so we don't know any better. That's right. But you talk to players who go from a team on the West Coast that travels a lot to a team in the Midwest, they said it's an unbelievable difference. Well, when your brother and I played in Cleveland, that similar in that Midwest area, we would leave the day of a game. Let's say we're starting a series on Monday in New York, we'd fly in Monday morning. Sure. You know, and get there, plenty of time. And, but uh, times are different now. That's fair. So Coco's got a chance to get a triple. He's headed for second. Helmet falls off, but he's digging for third, and he's going to make it with a head first slide, make it feet first. So it looked like Logan Morrison, the right fielder, was playing well off the line, and it took him a long time to track that ball down in the corner. And when you're facing Felix Hernandez, you want to do what you can to get the score position, and Coco Crisp realized one out in the inning. It's not as if it's a leadoff double and get him over. Try to get him in. He knows he needs to get the third, so maybe a ground ball, fly ball gets him in. And down in the corner, he's thinking three as soon as he left home plate. And this is all on his own. Did pick up Mike Diego there, but he knows the ball's in the corner, and maybe Diego could tell him that Morrison had a little tough time picking it up, and he kept going. But now he can get on the board with a ground out. And Donaldson takes the strike. Teams have not had a lot of time to be on the field to check things out, but Morgan, uh, Morgan Morrison was able to play it nicely off the wall. But you're right, he was so far off the line, he had a long run just to get to the ball. 0-1 to Donaldson. Rolls it foul, and now Donaldson has to put on a good battle here. It's 0-2. Well, Hernandez is thinking strikeout. He knows with the infield back that if he gives up a ground ball, it's going to be a run unless the ball is back to him. So being the strikeout pitcher that he is capable of being, that's what he's trying to do now. So Donaldson needs to fight him. Fastball inside. Donaldson with the ground out to short and the strikeout. So Donaldson and Felix Hernandez having a little go at it. Interesting stuff. Let's watch Donaldson after the pitch. One two pitch, swing and a miss, and a pitch that was low, and that's a strikeout. Does not do any good to give no. Felix Hernandez any more ammunition than he already has. Pitch really wasn't that far inside. No, and, and Lowry. with Phoenix looking back at him, then he knew here he's going to throw uh, something hard and out of the strike zone.
two outs and Lowry rolls it foul. So that was eight strikeouts. So that was the eighth strikeout for Felix Hernandez. He has not walked anybody, and you see the pitch count is not terribly high. It's 68. Little flare. Miller, the shortstop, is out, and he reaches up and he makes the catch. Side retired. So the A's cannot get Chris home from third, and it's still 3 0. Fourth, 1974 was opening day in Cincinnati, and that's Hank Aaron hitting career home run number 714 to tie Babe Ruth as the all-time home run king. It was off Jack Billingham, again, in Cincinnati. That was opening day, 1974. So the dilemma, if you're the Atlanta Braves, it's like, that's great. You've tied it. Now, don't you dare hit the record-breaking home run on the road. <laughs> They had a couple more games in Cincinnati before the Braves went home. And didn't they? Uh, wasn't he forced to play? Wasn't there something in it that I think they he wanted him to sit down? They said, "No, you're going to play." <laughs> it's like Ricky when he broke Lou Brock's record. Started at home, and then went 13, on the road, and Lou was Justin there. And, and I said, "Lou, what are you doing?" He said, oh, "I'm here to." He said, "Ricky's not going to break the game. <laughs> it's a stolen base record. Yeah. He's going to break it at home." And he did here at the Coliseum <laughs> against the Yankees, but so Lou left. Came back when the A's came back home, and he was here when Ricky broke his record. When it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change in Tune-Up, your oil change tune-up and break experts. This is Drew Pomeranz. So Straley, six innings. And just one bad inning, and it cost him. Three-nothing Seattle. Coco to his left. He's fighting the sun, but he hangs in there and he makes the catch. So Ackley's retired for Straley. See the 91 pitches. Six hits, three, three runs, Number all three, earned. Mike Zanino. And the stuff was there. It just got away from him in that one inning. But it's got to be so hard when... You're not going to face him yourself, but you know the opposing number, the opposing pitcher is one of the best in, in baseball, and you have to limit and try to put zeros up, which he did for the first four innings. Straight, he did a great job in striking out the seven. It doesn't take much, and make a couple of bad pitches, elevate them, and they hit hard. And you need a trailer. Oh, and two the count to Zanino, who has struck out and hit a fly ball to center field. Another teams in the AL West will play tonight. The Angels 
will be in Houston to take on the Astros. Skaggs and Keiko, a couple of young left handers. Angels got their first win last night. 11 to 1 in Houston. Hamilton, Josh Hamilton hit his first home run. Fastball is high. Rangers will be at the Rays. Nick Martinez, youngster making his major league debut for Texas. He'll be opposed by David Price. Rays won last night 8 to 1. Rangers committed four errors last night. Beltran a couple. You know it's yeah. going to be a bad night if Beltran makes a couple. That's on the field turf. That's pretty true hops there. Anders made an error. So the Rangers will try to bounce back tonight. These Mariners will have Monday off after tomorrow's game, and they will have their home opener on Tuesday against the Angels. Let's see if the Mariners did not have an off day. And Phoenix would pitch Thursday when the A's would be in <laughs> Minneapolis. So let's look at the schedule with the off day and then back him up. Pitch is a fastball inside. So they have an off day Monday. They have an off day so Monday. So maybe, maybe if he stays on his Tuesday. fifth day, he'll pitch Thursday. I think that would be a really <laughs> great idea. And I think we should mention that to Waiter. That's Rick right. Waits, the pitching coach. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still early in the season. He doesn't need extra rest now. Fouled again. Good battle here between Pomeranz and Zanino with El Monte in the on deck circle. Speaking of extra days rest, Sonny Gray is going to pitch tomorrow, so that'll be on his regular regular turn for the most part. And Tommy Malone, who was scheduled to pitch, is going to pitch in Arizona tomorrow to minor leaguers. And then Malone is going to rejoin the team in Minnesota early tomorrow night. So what's basically, happening is Tommy Malone's being skipped, so he will get his work in. And down in Arizona. So Sonny Gray and Erasmo Ramirez, who pitched well in his first start. 12 30, our coverage starts with A's pregame live and then the ball game at 105. So Sonny Gray, always look forward to seeing him pitch. And we'll have to wait for Tommy Malone in his first start. This one is sky to center, way up there. And Coco hangs in there, and he's got it for up to two. So you get Sonny Gray tomorrow, and then obviously Casimir will pitch on Monday, the Twins' home opener. We have not seen what will happen after that. There's an off day Tuesday. Now batting, number 36. And then the A's play Abraham straight Alan through the rest Kane. of the road trip. No off days. Top of the order in Abraham El Monte. Two strikeouts and a home run for El Monte. And he hits from the right side for the first time. El Monte has six at bats from the right side. It's two for six. Reddick back and over. And he's got it. And Pomerantz has a three up, three down inning with three fly ball out. Seventh inning stretch from the O.Co. Coliseum. The big fellows are coming up. And there they are.
Kate doesn't like us anymore. She'd rather be in the studio than out here at the ballpark. Remember that. Moss to lead it off in the bottom of the seventh inning. He's indeed trying to get something going against Felix Hernandez. Moss, Cespedes, and Jaso. Hernandez, eight strikeouts. He's thrown 70 pitches, 52 of them strikes. Jim Johnson is warming up. Moss drives on the left. It's a long run for Ackley toward the line, and he's going to get there in fair territory. One out. Not enough for the AT&T U-verse rewind. Well, you know when you're at the park, Felix Hernandez is pitching for the Mariners. It's going to be a tough day, and it has been a tough day for the Athletics. Says Dan Shreddy matched him for the first four innings, zeros, but one bad inning for Dan Shreddy. But King Felix has not had a bad inning, especially when he got a runner at third. And just one out struck out Josh Donaldson. That's the only real opportunity the A's have had other than a couple of innings to go when the lock ball was lost in the sun, second to third. Two outs could not get anything done. Seeger, nice play to his left. Flips to first. Two outs. So a hard hit ball, but Seeger, nice play to his left. Sounded good off the bat, but there's the difference of the no threat of a bunt. And so the infielder, third baseman, plays deep, able to cut the ball off in the hole and throw out the speedy Cespedes. Any thought that Cespedes might bunt might pull the third baseman in, even with the bag. Not the case. That's the work he has done at the Coliseum lately, which is something pretty special. Last time he lost here. I'm going to go back to 2008. He actually has a worse record, I think, against the A's at home, his home park, yep. than he does on the road, but he is good. Owen 2 to Jaso, who has struck out and hit a fly ball to center field. In the dirt. I mean, basically, every pitch he throws has some sort of yeah. movement in. So there are some pitchers that kind of create pitches when they're on the mound, and Felix kind of in that category. Off of Smoke's glove, and it rolls behind him. And Jason's going to be aboard with a two out hit. <laughs> so Hernandez gives up a hit to his old battery name. Smoke saved the extra bases, and that's important with two outs. That Jason was only able to reach first base, but satisfied with the base hit, the hooking line drive. The long first baseman's been not able to hang on. Here's a running. So basically, Ray, if you have downward movement on all your pitches and you have strikeout stuff, you probably couldn't ask for a better combination. And the reputation being an outstanding pitcher and all of those things factor in. I think as a hitter, you try maybe a little bit harder because you know it's going to be a tough day. And if you're an opposing pitcher, you know you can't afford to give up a run. Seeger handles a tricky little hop. Reddick's retired. He's 0 for 3 and so are the A's. Hitting a runner left and we're headed to the eighth inning. 3 nothing to Seattle.
catch with the Josh Donaldson diorama bobblehead presented by Comerica Bank. Get your tickets now for the A's Astros 105 p.m. game Saturday, April the 19th, when 20,000 fans will walk away with one of the most unique bobbleheads ever created. For information and tickets, visit athletics.com slash tickets or call 877-493-BALL. 3-0, the Mariners lead the A's. So when it's time for James, the Oil Change and Tune, the Oil Change Tune up and Smart five, Experts, and Jim Johnson's gonna in Jim Johnson is going to get in the game. This may not be a bad idea to Let's see if he can get a little confidence going after two real tough outings earlier this week. He'll face Miller, Cano, and Smoke. Well, Jim Johnson knows it's the end of the season. And all things are going to be good. Numbers will be there. Nice play by Lowry, the shortstop. He spins around and takes a hit away from Miller. One pitch, one out for Johnson. Very good play by Josh. Jet Lowry. And when you make that kind of play and you pick up the ball and you have to do the 360 and still pick up the first baseman with the momentum carrying you towards the outfield. And he makes a perfect throw to Derek Barton. Cano who takes a strike. Cano has hit a fly ball to center field and has singled and he has been intentionally walked. So one for two. And that one hit past the diving Lowry in the left field for a base hit. So seven hits now for the Mariners, two of them for Cano. And that's the reason. Robinson Cano was walked into the last inning in in just because of his ability to use the whole field. Oh. And as it turned out, this was a base hit. Fortunately, nobody on base. So Smoke steps in. He is 0 for 3. Off speed pitch is a strike. It Blue Jays beat the Yankees today, four to nothing in Toronto. R. A. Dickey got the win, home run for Jose Bautista, his third. And the big story for the Yankees in that game, Ray, was Michael Pineda made the start, and he pitched pretty well. He took the loss, but he pitched well, and that could be a big development for the Yankees if he was the yeah. young man who was had a terrific season with the Mariners and then was traded in the off season. Injured all last year, so ready for Montero, Miguel Montero, who uh, it's not Miguel. Miguel's with the Jesus. 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 That has not gone well. No, it's not. Matter of fact, in the minor leagues, looking at the first baseman, Mike Zanino changed all of that with his great catching. But that one time when Pineda was with the, the Mariners, they were looking at King Felix and Pineda back yeah. to back and traded him, and then it was Kuma stepped in. So imagine if they still had Pineda in the rotation. But the Yankees are hoping that he can come back from that injury. Masahiro Tanaka pitched well last night in his first start as the Yankee. He got the win. But today the Blue Jays shut out the Yankees. Tigers won again. They beat the Orioles 7 6. Tigers are 4 0. Torrey Hunter had five RBIs. Is Cabrera hitting 1,000? No, just a one for four with a double today. Nothing else. Runner goes, and the pitch is bounced foul. Chris Cabrera picked up his 2,000th career hit yesterday, and he did it with a home run. What a surprise. So 2,000 hits at he's 30 years old. And four yesterday. And four. And four. Yeah, he needed four and he got all four. Get to 2,000. Yeah, it probably felt a lot of pressure like he was never going to reach that milestone. Right? This could be it. Yeah. And two pitches low. Twins beat the Indians 7 to 3 in Cleveland after the Indians won their home opener yesterday. Heck, yesterday the Indians celebrated the 20 year anniversary of Progressive Field. Originally known as Jacobs Field. Mr. Jacobs, the big uh, downtown real estate man. 
Swing and a miss. Breaking ball from Johnson and Smoke strikes out, so he's over for four. If Cano shot up a flare from first base, Jaso came out from behind the plate, and that's the call from the dugout saying, There he goes. Watch Jaso on the off speed. There he comes out to throw. Cano just started to run, stop, got back to the bag. And a good breaking pitch from Jim Johnson. Fooling Justin Smoke, who is now 0 for 4 today. We start out the way Smoke did down in Anaheim, hitting behind Cano. Talk about pressure to live up to the expectations. Of course, that's kind of been what the Mariners had hoped. He did it in Anaheim, but does not mean it's going to carry through the entire season. The ups and downs of hitting. The protection thing in the lineup. It's a fascinating discussion because some people completely believe in it. And other people think there's nothing to it. Well, you know, I mean, it's. You know, you know today he, he finished the first inning, got a one out single in his next at bat, intentionally walked the next and a one out single this bat. Protection a lot of times can come before a big hit. Yeah. You get on base, and then you're forced to pitch to the hitter that you might be intentionally walking, but. In the case of a runner at second, first base open, it's logical. And not just because he might be the best hitter on the Mariners, but I think whether it's the Yankees or here or any team, they probably would pitch him carefully or intentionally walk him as they did. Let's go ahead. Very close. And Carl just got back. Barton had to reach for it just a little bit, but as he reached for it, he took he this, the tag. Right? He was headed that direction and then. Oh, wow. he was out. He sure, sure was. And I think he was out. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, oh, he, he was out, out yeah. by a fair amount. Umpire was blocked. But with that little lane towards first base or second base and trying to get back to first and <laughs> Manny likes that safe call. Regardless of foul ball or a runner is out back at the bag. You know that no challenges today by either manager and, and there's a play where the managers have said in the case for Barton maybe to stand up argue a little bit give it a little time yeah. for them to look at the play swing and a miss with Cano running so a couple of strikeouts for Jim Johnson so he has a good inning and the bottom of the eighth is coming up three nothing Mariners. This game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. This was a great pitching matchup, but in the fifth inning, the Mariners broke through a two run homer by Dustin Ackley. And then two batters later, Abraham Almonte homered. And it was three to nothing, all three runs coming in the top of the fifth inning. And the scary part for the A's so far is Felix Hernandez. I mean, this is as good as we've seen him in a long time. He has been very sharp with all this stuff. The A's have just four hits through seven innings. 3-7-0 for the Mariners, 0-4-0 for the Athletics. Straley ended up going 
six innings through 91 pitches. Hernandez, 80 pitches as we enter the bottom of the eighth inning. So a couple more cracks at it for the A's. It'll be Barton, Sogard, and Crisp. And nothing against the bullpen of the Mariners. They have a good one. But anytime Felix is on the mound, you hope to get the pitch count up where they have to go to the bullpen and feel like you might have a, at least a better chance. Mariners no. bullpen showed Thursday night that they're good. As the A's bullpen did the same thing. This would be the inning to try to get that pitch count over 100. Because he's a tough guy to take out of the game if he goes out there for the ninth inning. That's Evan Scribner throwing. You saw Michael Saunders now in right field for Seattle. 2 0 pitch poured in their first drive, 2 and 1. Barton the ground out and a fly ball to center field. Amante made a nice running catch. And that's a shot to right. Saunders right there made the catch. So Barton. Got a high fastball and had a good rip at it, but he lines it right into the glove of Sarkis. Two players balls players hit players very players hard. Players the one he hit his last to bat. Left center right down by the center, center fielder Amonte, and this one hard hit, but unfortunately right to Sarkis. These good swings, good aggressive swings by Barton both times. The last two at bats, two and one counts, and aggressively going after fastballs. Hit them hard, nothing to show for it, but good swings. And you'll take it. First pitch to Sogard down around the knees first strike. Sogard a line out and a fly ball to center field. Line drive and Smoke leaps up and grabs it. What a play by Justin Smoke. Time down the forward right choice. Speaking of smoke, uh, drive by Coco Chris by smoke down in the corner. And that would result in a one out triple for Coco. As he headed in the third base, but unfortunately he was stranded there. Josh Donaldson struck out with the runner third infield back, not able to get home Coco Chris. Just tall enough, timed his leap perfectly and robbed Sogard of extra bases. It's a tall first baseman, made it even taller with his jump. Foul ball past the A's bullpen, so one and one the count. <laughs> Two singles, a double, and a triple for the A's against Hernandez, but no runs. Another final in the American League. Look at the pitches printing. Still under 90. And 21 was the inning high. That was the fourth inning. And that's when the A's had a couple of hits. But that other final, the Royals beat the White Sox 4 to 3 in Kansas City. The other three games are at night. Three one pitch missed outside and it's a two out walk. First walk by Hernandez. He's getting tired of starting elevated pitches. No quite. He's <laughs> getting under it. Now batting third baseman number twenty, Josh Donaldson. Phone is ringing, so they will get some action. See now Hernandez is going to look down there and see that, and he's going to get ticked off. And Donaldson's to the plate <laughs> and just looking into seeing Josh who probably ticked him off. First pitch right on the outside corner with a fastball and it's on. Donaldson is 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. A slow start for Donaldson. 2 for 21. Hit to right field. Saunders coming in, and Saunders 
makes the catch. So Donaldson a line Melvin's drive. coming out. Excuse me. Melvin's coming out. And so we may get a challenge. Bob Melvin right out of it. Right out of the dugout. And the umpires are waving the Mariners to stay on the yeah. field. And if it's the third out of an inning, Bob yeah. Melvin needs to request a challenge. And quickly. Coco didn't stop running. Okay? He just kept running. He's at home plate walking back towards third. So it's the trap. Did he catch it? Did he not? A reviewable play. It's a catch. And by that look, it looks like he caught it, and then his glove kind of jammed into the ground. So we do not know if there was a challenge made by Bob Melvin. It does not look like there was. So catch was made, and we're to the night. Sports and by Toyota. Do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. Three to one, the Mariners. It's the top of the ninth inning. He's go back to the bullpen and they grab Evan Scribner. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and break expert. Second appearance for Scribner. Well, Jim Johnson a good inning gives up a hit but has a couple of strikeouts. And a quick go two to Seeker who is one for three with a double and a run score. Michael Saunders will be next. That one rolled. Third fair ball. Donaldson with a nice play. So a little cue shot and Donaldson took care of it and that's a pretty good play. Excellent play since he had to come as far as he did playing back with a couple of strikes and he is midway past the bag and he knew he had to throw it quickly throw it hard and accurately which he did all of the above. Derek Barton is very nice typical long stretch to help out the infielder. That's Donaldson's why he was the top of the third baseman when it comes to receiving the blow glove in plays like that. Going one to Michael Saunders. Bullpen is quiet for the Mariners. No surprise there.
Saunders is lose a little playing time this year with there's El Monte playing center field now. Remember Ray, the Mariners actually re-signed Franklin Gutierrez. And he was a free agent. And they wanted him back and he re-signed. A much smaller contract than what he had. And then again, a strange stomach situation that has really bothered him. And, and he's not going to play at all this year, yeah. which is really too bad. Hello. A great talent. They signed him to a long term contract, all of those things, but without Monty playing the way he is, his aggressiveness and actually doing a, a very good job in left field, well, signing we, Morrison's. So. We saw Gutierrez oh, maybe three years ago when he, he stayed healthy, played a full season. He's a really good player. Yeah, great center fielder. Got some, uh, some big hits. Yeah. The closer Fernando Rodney. The batter's number three. Just wonder Wednesday if it's a matter of him, just in case. Felix will get the opportunity to finish it. I'm sure. If it was I think he would have been up a little bit earlier than this. Two and one now to Ackley, who has well, the big hit in the game, a two-run homer. In the fifth inning, his first of the year. He's now got six RBIs, does Ackley, so he's off to good start. Ackley becoming a productive offensive player would be huge for the Mariners this year. Lowry grabs it, flips on the run side, retired. Scribner with a three up, three down inning. So, Work to do for the A's as we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. They trail three to nothing. Nothing. The Mariners lead, and Felix Hernandez back to work. Lowry, Moss, and Cespedes, the three scheduled hitters. 23 complete, career complete games for Hernandez. Nine shutouts. Five of those nine shutouts came last year. So he is looking for his 10th career shutout here this afternoon. 94 pitches. Hit well to right center. Saunders on the move, and it is gone. Lowry homers. The shutout is gone, and it's three to one. One day time. 
in baseball, what a difference it makes. And Jet Lowry got the off-speed pitch. How about that? A slow curveball at 79 miles per hour. He stayed back. And while this day, King Phoenix has usually thrown that pitch very hard to where a hitter did not have a chance to adjust, but Lowry did. And there's a shot to center, and that's a base hit. So the A's are going to have their tying run at the play. Like the slow, slow, slow curveball, and Jed Lowry, great swing, and the following base hit by Brandon Moss, and Boyd McClendon's going to his closer. So 96 pitches. The call has not been made yet. And they're going to leave him in there. So Cespedes is the hitter. After Cespedes, it's Jaso. After Jaso, it's Reddick. Lloyd McClendon knows King Phoenix, or he knows King Phoenix knows himself. And that was just a question. And not many pitchers will ever say, I want to come out of the game. No. Especially when the game's on the line. And let's hope that by Phoenix talking out, talking at least uh, himself in the game, at least one more batter. See what happens to Cespedes out of Cespedes rolls it foul towards Mike Gallego. So 0 and 1 the count. Sean Doolittle gets up. And that one scoots away from Zanino, rolls all the way toward the A's dugout. And Moss is now at second. Breaking pitch, no way Zanino could handle this one. It's such a biting, hard breaking pitch. And even though he got the glove on it, it's the heel of the glove and bounced away from it. One one pitch is ripped foul, and it's one and two. Tough play for the ball boy. Well, the wild pitch takes any possibility of a double play out of the picture. Let off the inning with a home run to break up the shutout. Lost a single to second on a wild pitch. That one hit down the left field line. Fair foul. Foul. Mm. And Mike Guy third base coach immediately went to the foul line so he could get a great look at it and let's see on the replay that he just got out in front too much of the off speed pitch and pulled it foul. Bob Melvin of course in the dugout just waiting for reaction from Gallego but nothing there. Another one two. Here is He's popped up to right field. Saunders shading his eyes. Moss is tagging. Moss bluffs but stays at second. Cespedes is retired, and that's out number one. Yeah, just Cespedes just too quick on the high speed pitch, and I mean, know it's a couple of strikes. He just look at Gag on the screen, see him going to the foul line, and just didn't happen. Now McClendon's not going to take a chance. Jason. So at 101 pitches, Hernandez is going to come out of the game. Yeah, maybe it was just about the one batter. Can you get out Cespedes? And said yes and almost did. So when it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up. It's your oil change tune up and break experts.
present Salute to Service Sundays this season at each Sunday home game. Veterans, active duty, and first responder personnel can purchase tickets at a discounted price. They will receive a $7 off Plaza level tickets and $5 off Plaza Resort tickets to all 13 Sunday home games. That starts tomorrow. Visit athletics.com slash military for more information and tickets. Uh, do little. Of course, you mentioned a big supporter of GovX and military and Congratulate and commend him for that. And I think you'd like to see him come in in the 10th inning. Yes. <laughs> I hope we see him in the 10th inning. Be nice. Lando Rodney, we know what he's about. Very good fastball, very good changeup. First pitch, Jaso hits it high and foul. So, Fernando Rodney. A new closer for the Mariners. All those great years with the Tigers. A couple down years with the Angels, but the last two years very strong with the Rays. 48 saves in 2012, 37 saves last year, and the new two year contract with the Mariners. One walk, eight strikeouts for Hernandez. But all he can do now is sit and wait, cheer on. His new closer, Fernando Rodney, 37 years old. He's Rodney. Two pitch to Jaso, fastball outside. Still throws hard. This is 94, 95 yeah. miles an hour. I think Chili Davis says it best. He has a great fastball and a great changeup. But you can't look for both. You look for one or the other. And you can't sit on a changeup and a fastball and vice versa. Jaso had a good swing on the first pitch fastball from Rodney. Then Foul back. And that one's popped up and that should reach the seat. Zanino is back and it will. First row. Sometimes it's best that the front row of the diamond level is closer to the plate than the pitcher's mound is, and that ball ended up in diamond level because of it. Phoenix will not lose this game. The worst he could do is get a no decision if the A's can come up with two. So his streak of consecutive non losses at the Coliseum will continue. The A's would love to find a way to come back, at least tight, take an extra inning, so we can do better. Outside, and now it's two and two with Reddick waiting in the on deck circle. The A's now with six hits in the game. The Mariners have seven. A second 2 2 pitch is low and Jaso fell behind 0 2 and now it's 3 2. And it took the change up like he knew it was coming and maybe he was looking change up but as a result wasn't fooled by looking fastball. Everybody up on their feet here at the Coliseum. Remember when Rich Harden pitched, he was a fastball change up pitcher. That was it, two pitches. You look for one or the other, but you can't look for both. It's amazing. But a pitcher can have the success that Rodney has had with two pitches, but such a differential between the two. Three two pitch strike, three call. Wow. Well, how huge is that? Would have been two on and one out. Well, a low strike was called early when Felix is on the mound and John Jaso. He thought it was a ball. He thought it was low. But that angle shows maybe too close to take. Watch the front knee. Where does the ball go past? Well, that's very close. Yeah. That's one of the one of those that's just too close to take, unfortunately. So two outs, and here's Reddick. Reddick takes a strike on the outside corner. So that ball moving away from Reddick, but Fielden Culver said it just grabbed the outside corner. Swing and 
a miss, and that's the changeup, 81 miles per hour, and it it almost looks like it kind of flutters up there. That's a big time changeup, and when I mean, you throw mid to upper 90s with a fastball and changeup that is a lot slower, it, we're looking at 12 to 18 mile per hour differential. Reddick is 0 for 3, a strikeout and a couple of ground outs so far today. He's looking for a big blast. Moss at second, two outs. The two pitch. And Reddick is able to hold up on that changeup again. It's definitely he held up, not any closeness at all to a swing. Barton would be next, and the pitch is outside, not by a lot. An hour and Fernando Rodney comes in and he strikes out the two hitters that he faces. And Felix Hernandez, terrific today, and he gets the win, his second win of the year. So the A's fall to two and three with the loss. The Mariners raise their record to four and one with the win. The final score this afternoon the Seattle Mariners three and the Oakland A's one. Rubber game of the series coming up tomorrow afternoon. You've been watching Oakland A's baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California. Don't go away. A's post game live with Brody and Shooty starts right now.